Let's move on to video games. Video games. A couple like big events in video games. The first issue of Nintendo Power came out in 88. The Sega Mega Drive released in Japan in 88. And Nintendo released the Power Pad, which I fucking loved. Things in arcades in 88, Altered Beast, Ghouls and Ghosts, which was a sequel to I get it. Ghosts kind and of. Goblins, Double Dragon 2 Always in, in, in arcades, um, the arcade version of Tetris, and Narc, which is a really fun game to play, but is really bad in subject matter. On home consoles, Super Contra came out. Tetris. My mom is incredible at Tetris type games. Did you know that you can beat Tetris? Mm -hmm. There's an end to Tetris. How many levels does it go? A lot. I think it's like thirty thousand. No, I think it's I think it's like ninety. Has anybody done it? My mom. I've watched her do it. How um, fast does it go? It's insane. I like I cannot fathom. But my mom was really excellent at it. Tetris is one of the only video games that I know. <laughs> Tetris stresses me out too much. Like it's fun for like a yeah. minute. I'm just like, no, I'm stressed. Bye. And it's then I, stressful. and then no, you know it's bad when you start to dream about it, and then you're like, I'm not playing Tetris anymore. So <laughs> that's, that's, that's a that's a psychological it's thing. A the the Tetris effect. On Radio yeah. Lab. Yeah, yeah, the Tetris effect. Yeah, that it, it's a thing named for Tetris. Yeah, Dragon Quest Three. I've played Dragon Quest Three. And I enjoyed it enough to get to like the last dungeon and I got really fucking sick of it. It's extremely grindy and extremely patriarchal. Treasure Island Dizzy, which I don't think is a super well-known game, but I've played and I liked a lot. So next we've got Super Mario Bros. 2. So we've already done a full review of this, but th this is the American version of Super Mario Bros. 2 that Eric and I have reviewed already. Then we've got Super Mario Bros. 3 in Japan, <laughs> not in the US yet. But this um, is Super Mario 3, like this is the our, Tanuki yeah, tail. And this is the one that we're that. used to. So we will go into full detail of this one at some point soon, which is I think the next game that, that we have to review, which will be a thing that Erica and I do, because this is her wheelhouse. Okay. Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link, which Ramin and I have a review coming out, or actually by the time this is posted, it will probably already be out. A hot, steamy review. It's, mm -hmm. it's very sexy role. You'll see at least three nipples. Um, you may or may not see nipples. Ninja Gaiden, which is one of the hardest fucking games of all time, mm -hmm. but I fucking I, I love it. So so as a kid, I used to run around on the playground in grade school with my friend at the time, Cole, and we would pretend we were characters in Ninja Gaiden. Also, Final Fantasy II came out in Japan, which we all and I also have a review coming out of. Furion is still a better name than Cloud. Mega Man Two came out in Japan. <laughs> There's approximately 500 Mega Man. Yeah. I um, once played a Mega Man. Mega I don't know what Man happened. Games. I wasn't very good at it. I don't like video games. Oh yeah, much. no, no, I, I'm I'm horrible at Mega Man games. I'm really fucking bad at them. Also, Fantasy Star came out of the US, which I've never played. Did you play any Fantasy Stars for me? No, but I really want to. They're supposed to be good. Video games are not doing anything super interesting yet. Awesome. The only two franchises that grow into anything are Ninja Gaiden and Fantasy Star. Everything else is a continuation of a fan uh, of a franchise that we've already had before and not anything like crazy new. But now we can move on to music. We're going through albums released first in alphabetical order by album title. Millie Vanilli, thoughts on Millie Vanilli in general? I think their music was catchy. I know it wasn't technically their music, but also apparently it was like an actual ensemble that was lip they lip synced for. Like it wasn't just some random background singers, like there was an actual group. Also, I don't blame them for picking those guys to lip sync because they were hot. Yeah. They won, like, the Grammy, and that was, like, part of the controversy of it. It's like, if you're going to go up and accept an award on behalf of somebody else who performed the music, you know what I mean? Yeah. I like. I feel like that's part of the, like, the lip sync controversy was, was that it wasn't just that they were lip syncing to somebody else. It was that... There was this other artist in the background or group of artists who were not getting credit for making this music and these two handsome guys were, you know, yeah. accepting Grammys, yeah. <laughs> right, for music they didn't do. That continued through the 90s, it's like CNC Music Factory, who had like a couple big hits. Like who sang this? Martha, Martha Wash. Wash. Yeah. Who was, yeah, but who like was... CNC Music Factory was still the artist. It's like it's like 
and it was like featuring Martha Wash. But they, they never mm. mentioned her name. Right. And in all the music videos, they had some yeah. supermodels. Yeah, supermodels lip syncing. Where is that line drawn? Like, I can see your reasoning behind drawing it at the Grammy, but I feel like maybe we should draw it sooner because there's a whole lot of really amazing musical artists and works that were not awarded the Grammy that people would probably be outraged well, over. Well, and the question is, like, who, who gets credit for the music? Because with the CNC Music Factory thing, it's like, she sang on that track, but it wasn't her track. Right. Right? Whereas with Millie Van Vanilli, you had these two guys who were saying, we are Millie Vanilli. And they weren't Millie Vanilli. <laughs> Bette Midler is American treasure. I fucking love Bette Midler. But I wish the raunchy gay club performing Bette Midler were the B Bette Midler that we all got. Chattanooga Choo Choo and all that. As much as The Wind Beneath My Wings is a cheesy song, a cheesy song that I love, she sounds really good on it. Yeah. She sounds belty. I, I was actually thinking about how I didn't think she sounded oh, that Oh, I think she it. sounds so good. Yeah. And it's actually a more difficult range than people give it credit it's for. It's high. It's very and high. And she belts it. And yeah. I, think, I, I think it gets a little shrill. Bobby Brown, Don't Be Cruel, which incru it includes, includes the songs Don't Be Cruel, My Prerogative, and, oh, my prerogative. and Every Little Step I take, take. These songs are fun. Yeah. They are. He was a kid. He, he was, was like an nine, abusive monster kid. He was like 19 yeah. at the time. That's Whitney was 25, he was 19 at this time. I, we, we looked it up last weekend. Awful people making good music. It's mm -hmm. a thing that happens all the time. Weird Al. I really respect his proclivity for lyric writing. His voice is fucking grating. Although, well, I mean, pro well produced. Yeah, and I mean, that also is kind of the point, right? Yeah. Weird, Weird, Weird Al knows his lane and he stays in it. Weird Al, musician, comedian, or both? Both. Both and part-time supermodel. To say that somebody can, can sing and sing well, that does make them a musician. But his whole shtick has been making these parodies of these songs, which yeah. is really just changing the lyrics. He does them very well, but, you know, as a classically trained musician, I'm a little snobby about who I would categorize as a musician. But he so, played the accordion. Yeah, so, so yeah. like, I think if you play music, even if it's just for yourself in your home, you're a musician. Yes, that's true. I think Weird Al does more than just change the lyrics, because if you look at songs like Lasagna, which is La Bamba, Mm -hmm. He does it very Italian. He continues the joke into more than just changing the lyrics. You know what I might call him? Let's call him. Let's call him a character musician. I like that. Oh, I, like I that. do like that. You know, we have a lot of categories like that in in opera and in other classical realms where people have a niche and they stay with it. Weird Al does that very well. A character soprano in in an opera is like Deflator Mouse or something where they're. Absolutely playing a character. Pants rolls from Mezzos are the same way. So with Weird Al, let's call him, we'll call him a character musician. Yeah, I like that. So I had this on cassette tape. I listened to it all the fucking time when I was a kid. I could never listen to this entire album again. It, I just could not stomach listening to it. But that does not mean I think it's bad. It's just not for me anymore. Let's move on to the Bengals Everything, which has Eternal Flame on it. <gasps> Eternal Flame! Oh! I love that song so much, and I think it needs to be my new karaoke go-to. Yes! <laughs> I was talking the other day about how, like, there are certain songs from this period of my very early childhood that I would hear, and they seem to me to be songs of such supreme, heavenly beauty Leonard that, Cohen. like, we were only, like, blessed with on this earth and eternal flame <laughs> was one of these songs. This song was so, like, Meaningful to me when I was like four. It's okay. <laughs> you know, no Teddy Figaro, Green Cycle, Eternal Play. <laughs> yes! Do you remember the time that we were at one of your parties and we started singing and everybody was just watching us, like yes. with horrified looks on their faces? Everyone's favorite Paula Abdul, her album Forever Your Girl, which includes The Way You Love Me, <laughs> Opposites Attract, yeah. Straight Up. Yes. And cold hearted. Yeah. So, Michael, you said something about this album the other day, and I was like, I cannot believe that you and I have this thing in common from our early childhood. What I said was that I remember telling people when I was very young, like five, 
that Paula Abdul is my favorite musician. And I remember telling people when I was like that, That's that Paula Abdul was my favorite musician. <laughs> the obvious standout is Straight Up. Like, straight so up good. Is... And that was the first one I ever remember hearing. When I was a kid, I made my dad buy me, like, um, it was like on the Blockbuster, like, cheap discount, like, video shop, a VHS video, Paula Abdul, live in concert. I bought this VHS video. I watched that shit over and over and over and over. My dad, who is a huge indie rock, like, music fanatic, hated this shit. <laughs> he hated it so much, but he could not take Paula Abdul away from me. What struck me about that video of her singing The Way That You Love Me is she is not singing. That sort of ties into our discussion of Millie Vanilli. Mm. Like, at what point do we care? Because I do not care. But she sang on the recording. Yes, that is actually her voice. And she can sing, and that is her doing it. But when performing live, at what point do we care how, if the person is singing or not? Like. Paula Abdul put on such a fantastic show. Like the dancing in that video yeah, is phenomenal. insane. It's so good. It's like it's like some Bob Bossy shit. Like oh, oh my, my god. Like her climbing up scaffold, like, scaffolding, like you said, and jumping off and falling yeah. into people's arms, and then like doing a yeah. flip. Yeah. Oh and my then, god. Like, what it's the so fuck? Good. Which includes Stand and Orange Crush. And Pop Song Eighty Nine. Molly and I were just talking about Stand. And we were in the last video. We were talking about key changes, and Stand has some of the best key changes. There's some Beyonce key changes at the end. Yeah. They have the, the, several key changes. What I love about Stand is how by the end, the backup singers or the people who are not singing the melody are like screaming. Stand <laughs> is, you know, I think a deeply underrated song. I love Stand. It is such a good song. Oh, I loved New Kids on the Block when I was young. It was my first favorite band. I don't think it was everybody's first favorite band that's under the age of four. Every, maybe every female, I don't know. I barely knew they existed in my childhood. I feel like I was like a year too young for them. Um, I have to turn a controversial asshole. opinion. Here, which girl. is that I don't think New Kids on the Block was good at all. Oh, like then you don't all. like what, Backstreet Boys or NSYNC either? I love Backstreet Boys and NSYNC. Well, it's all oh. the same no. iteration. I, but I could say that about Beach Boys. Well, you can't like New Kids on the Block if you don't like Beach Boys. No, no. no. Here's That's... the difference. The Backstreet Boys and NSYNC had um, the Swedish guy, Martin, Max Martin. Max Martin. Max Martin. And New Kids on the Block didn't. But if they did, they would have been just as unstoppable. So here's the thing, like the, the, with a lot of those boy brands, that, that whole boy band craze in the 90s was generated out of like what songs they did, what kind of publications they were, and the image of yeah. the singers. In terms of Tiger like beat. vocal style and vocal ability, I think the three are really on par. I think that Backstreet Boys, NSYNC, and New Kids on the Block were all very vocally talented. And they, they, again, they, they knew their audience and they played to that. They harmonized really well together. I think in that sense, you can compare the, the, those three very well. But Here's the thing. New Edition was better. We don't all know the same things because of racism, largely. Everything that we're talking about, there are plenty more things that we could talk about that are worthy of talking about that we just don't know about. But we so, want to learn. Yeah, so if, like, of the four of you who are watching, who are not us, um, if there's anything that you want us to listen to, please let me know, because I always want to listen to everything that I've not listened to before, so, like, please tell us. We can't let this conversation end without pointing out Michael's t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Kylie Minogue's debut album, <laughs> Kylie, which includes the look of motion and her being cut up. And <laughs> also, I'm gonna break my laptop <laughs> over it, but I don't care. People who are not 30 or older might not have heard her version of the look of motion, which is an older song. That's Kylie Minogue? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, she like is one of those artists I respect because she does just the one thing, but she knows that's the only thing she does. And she does it well. She makes gay men love her. That's right. <laughs> but the Locomotion Kylie Minogue's version of it that I just now learned was Kylie Minogue. I remember hearing that a 
lock as a kid. Uh, oh my god. And then hearing the older version and then realizing that they were two different versions of the same song. The Sugar Cubes debut album, Life's Too Good. So the Sugar Cubes is a uh, punk slash pop punk band with Bjork as one of the lead singers in it. And it's Bjork's adult debut. And the Sugar Cubes are so fucking fun. <laughs> Just like highly caffeinated, really positive, but also really like progressive values punk. Yeah, so we've been listening to that album a little bit and I want to listen to it more. It's so fun. I didn't know it before this last week. Also in 88, Princess Love Sexy, which has Alphabet Street on it, which is covered by Sufjan Stevens on one of his Christmas albums. I love how obsessed you are with Also, just looking at the album yeah. art, like, it can't be overstated. Prince was a beautiful that is human. That pornographic. Oh he, my god. I don't care. I would say Sweet yes. Anthony. I would Stunning. absolutely say yes. I feel like every living being on the planet would at least think about it. Look, <laughs> if you don't want to fuck Prince... I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> I have questions about your taste. <laughs> and they're not nice questions. They're going to be worded very rudely. Fuck with Prince or don't fuck with me. <laughs> <laughs> right. Bobby McFerrin, Simple Pleasures, which, song, in, which includes Don't Worry, Be Happy. Mm -hmm. Do you remember, guys, how that song was everywhere? <laughs> it was inescapable. But also, Bobby McFerrin is an incredible musician. He is. Yes, he really is. Yes. So good. He's 100%. got an incredible ear. He's great at teaching students. Mm -hmm. He's taught other musicians around the world. And right. if anybody really wants to nerd out on the music, music and the brain, music psychology aspect of things, he there's a video on YouTube. It's like an hour long, but it's from a. a it's some, not a TED talk, but something similar where yeah. he went and basically the, the, a group of people yes. were talking about music and it's, the brain. Yeah, so and Bobby good. McFerrin is a genius musician and he really understands the impact that music has on all of us and how it works in our brains. He also understands the impact of not worrying and being happy. Oh, N.W.A. Oh, that's yeah. the one I was talking this about when I said yeah. fuck the police. N.W.A. and this album, obviously iconic. Yeah. I mean, they invented the parental advisory sticker. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Boy, they made people so mad by saying, fuck the police. And here it is, 30 years later, people are still saying, fuck the police and pissing people off. Yep. Well, no, now we're more politely saying, defund the police. <laughs> it's still pissing people off. <laughs> abolish. Fuck and defund the police. And abolish. <laughs> and abolish the police. Defolish the police. <laughs> Moving on to Billy Ocean, Tear Down These Walls, which has Get Out of My Dreams, Get Into My Car. Get out of my dreams. A story my parents like to tell about me. Um, at one point they were like, I think it was my mom who was getting me in the car and like put me in the car seat and then like decided she wanted to have a cigarette. So she like stood right outside the car. The car was running, I was in it and she was standing outside having a cigarette then she got in the car and get out of my dreams get into my car was playing on the radio and i was singing along and she just gets, gets in the car and i'm like hey you <laughs> get into my car <laughs> i'm a little baby <laughs> along. tracy chapman's eponymous album which includes fast car of all hits to have Fast Car. Oh, I know. Like, such an iconic, iconic song. And it holds up to this day. Our friend Bob, who was talking about how he had this fantasy when he used to work in a FedEx Kinko's uh, with, uh, like, some hot guy that he was into, and they would work a night shift, and it would be really slow, and they wouldn't really have any customers, and so they basically didn't really have any responsibilities. And he was like... I just had this fantasy that like we would spend the rest of our lives just working together in this Kinko's without any responsibilities. I'm like, that's fast car! <laughs> we can all, like, on a bad day, turn on that song and go, like, yeah, I feel this. I feel like 98% of the world could do that. Yeah. It's also one of those songs where somehow the lyrics are equally as good as the music. Oh, it's so good. Because that's really rare. Most of the acts we've talked about tonight the music is really great, but the lyrics are okay. It's got that guitar lick that as soon as you hear it, you're like, oh, it's a fast car. Yeah. And then, you know, and then that opening lyric, you got a fast car, I want a ticket to anywhere. Like, yeah. yeah. 
but it's just yeah. crushing and like yes. truthful. And then that, that that sort of low whisper that she sings it. Mm-hmm. Let's give credit where it's due to talk about a revolution. It's a good song. She's so good. She's more than a one hit wonder, y'all. Everyone, Everyone whisper her name. One, <laughs> two, three. Jesse <laughs> Stanton. I missed it. Ramin and I have a full review of this coming at some point. Stay tuned. Yes. But right. in musical theater! Yeah, we're moving on to musical theater now. So the two musicals that came out in 88 that I thought were um, notable were Chess, which is music, that... the music by ABBA. Chess is one of the rare three-act musicals. And <laughs> Phantom de l'Opéra. Yeah, Phantom of the Opera also came out in 88. Um, Couldn't be more different. Can I secretly <laughs> so, love actually, Phantom of the Opera? No, I feel like they're actually way closer than we give them credit. <laughs> but to me, chess is more fascinating, and maybe it's because I'm a big musical theater nerd and I'm tired of Phantom at this point in my life, but also, chess is such a great examination of the Cold War mm-hmm. dynamic, right? Of like, like, we are here playing a game of chess that somehow means much more than just this game of chess. But the music from chess is mostly pretty good. It, yeah. it, it honestly is. We've also got Phantom of the Opera, which was <laughs> great segue. Right the ground. But, but Phantom, like, I can't hate Phantom of the Opera. I can't either. I secretly yeah. love it. And actually, it was my first Broadway show Same. ever. Even though I don't think it's brilliant, I do still kind of love it. Um, it's good theater. Yeah. It's great theater. When the chandelier falls, like, that is so exciting. Yeah. I have a PSA for you. The Phantom of the Opera is a musical about opera. It is not opera. You're welcome. It does play on many opera tropes, especially in the show within a show moments. Correct. Starring Carlotta, which are the best moments of the show. Correct. Okay, another game. Oh, another game. I forgot about the games. Best hard rock or metal performance. Yeah, Metallica and Justice for All. No. Molly. I think I actually know the answer to this, and I think it's Jethro Tull, Crest of a Knave. Yeah, that's why I added it. Because it, it, was was, it was controversial. Because it's metal with a flute. Mm-hmm. Best pop female now, vocals. All right, now just one second. That's unfair. Give me the hard metal question, and then he gets best pop vocals. I wanted to be Whitney Houston, but I feel like the Academy was fucking full of shit. Tracy Chapman, Fast Car. That's it. Who won best pop male vocals? Sting. No. Is it Bobby McFerrin? For Don't Worry Be Happy? It most certainly is. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, the words is my game. Who won Best New Artist in 88? I mean, even though Vanessa Williams is high quality, I'm gonna go with Tracy Chapman. Yes, she did win that year. Oh, not Rick Astley? Not Rick Astley. That's a shame. Erica, who won the <laughs> Record of the Year in 88? Michael um, Jackson, Man in the Mirror. No. Is it Bobby McFerrin, Don't Worry, Be Happy? It is Bobby McFerrin, Don't Worry, Be Happy. Who won Song of the Year? As much as I would definitely go straight for Anita Baker, I'm going to go with Tracy Chapman. No. So was, it, was it a Tracy sweet no. or a Bobby McFerrin sweet? No. Bobby McFerrin, Don't Worry, Be Happy. Bobby McFerrin, Don't Worry, Be Happy. I wasn't falling for that a third time. <laughs> Who won Album of the Year? See, the thing is, Bobby McFerrin, like, the song, he's taking the song categories, but Tracy won Best New Artist and Best Pop Female Vocals. Come on, Molly, you know it's Steve Winwood. No, I think it's Tracy Chapman. No. <gasps> For me. Bobby McFerrin? No. Fuck! George Michael Faith. Yes. Woohoo! Oh! Wow! That Miller Beaches. This is only like half no. of the list. Um, more. NWA Straight Out of Compton. That is number one. Ha! Thanks. Tracy Chapman. Tracy Chapman. No. Shit. Bobby McFerrin, Simple Pleasures. No. <sighs> Public Enemy, It Takes a Nation of Millions to Hold Us Back. That is number five. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's going to be a no, but R-E-M, Green. No. Yep. Prince, Love, Sexy. No. That's what I was going to guess. You guys both guessed too. once I was going to guess. Sade, Stronger Than Pride. Mm-mm. Fuck it, I'm gonna go for Neil Young and Blue Notes. Nope. Well, I'm out. Johnny Cash, Water From The Wells Of Home. That was number three. Okay. Shit. Leonard Cohen, I'm Your Man. 
No. Yeah, no, I think it's Kylie Minogue. <laughs> oh. But I'm now in the lead. Yes, you are. So for this, I gave you the top 30. You have to pick the top 10 from that 30. Elton John, I don't want to go on with you like that. Yes, that is number 10. Tracy Chapman. No. Damn it! In Excess, New Sensation. Yes. That's number seven. <sighs> DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince, Parents Just Don't Understand. That is an excellent song, but no, unfortunately. Oh, what? How was that not most popular? Guns N' Roses, Sweet Child of Mine. Mm -hmm. Nope. No? Death Leopard, Pour Some Sugar On Me. Yep. That is number four. Chicago, I Don't Want to Live Without Your Love. Nope. <laughs> Aerosmith, Ragdoll. Nope. Rod Stewart, Lost in You. Nope. I know, I know it, I know it, I know it. Molly. One, two, three, four. That's number eight, Molly got three points. George Michael Monkey. No, okay. Whitney Houston, Love Will Save the Day. No. I'm gonna say Billy Ocean, The Color of Love. Nope. <laughs> Any general thoughts, especially dealing with representation for people of color, representation for women, representation for LGBT, LGBTQIA plus people? We have um, Coming to America. You're correct. We have Public Enemy. We have NWA. So I feel like a lot of this is that people are starting to come around but I also wonder if a lot of it is like, oh, people like this. We should think, we should say that we like this. Which is a very cynical view mm -hmm. of this. Pandering. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm wondering if that's the case though. When you say that people like this, we should say that we like this. The thing is, who are the people who like this? We're starting to see black people's tastes being like becoming influential, right? And I think that that is important. Yes. Although I will say it's probably more that they're becoming publicly influential. But like looking at um, the lists for female representation, it is still very male. Oh, yeah. Incredibly male. So Tracy Chapman won some awards, but I feel like one of the awards that she won for best pop female vocals probably should have gone to Whitney Houston. Mm -hmm. But but Tracy was singing in a more a, a style that was more palatable to white people. Probably. Yeah. Otherwise, when both Tracy and Bobby McFerrin were up for the same award, Bobby won. LGBTQIA plus people. Does George Michael count? He was not out yet. Not yet. Um, we did have movies by John Waters. Does that count? They didn't make a lot of It was countercultural. It was, it was yeah. on the underground, in the art house. Yeah. I feel like one of the things that I'm noticing from this year is that the people who make it through the straight white male stranglehold are just like singular. We are not yet seeing a movement. Mm -hmm in any of these yeah, areas. Yeah, I, I think you're right. But I think we're increasingly seeing people open to the ideas of people who are not straight white male. They're open to capitalizing off of the ideas of yeah. people who are not straight white male. So I, so I think one of the things that we'll notice when we get in the late 90s, in however many years it takes us to get there, is that the internet opens up a lot of that stuff. Oh, yeah, 100%. Well, and also what's happened since the mainstreaming of the internet is that people started sectioning themselves off based on what they're interested in. And so instead of having one huge movie or television show or something that everybody is watching, it's like there is 20 that have much smaller groups 
that are into them. Which is know? which is going to be interesting when we get into how I am compiling all of these ideas. This is like award shows still tend to be pretty conservative in their tastes. Totally. But things like cr critics are slowly getting better, I think. It's also really hard to say because I haven't s studied this stuff enough. Yeah. Yeah. And when it comes to like people's taste of things, that's a hard metric because how do you rate that other than people opting into something? And the people who tend to opt in are white men. This has been an interesting project, and I'm I'm excited to see what 1989 holds for us. End of the decade. Oh, okay. So Molly's not in the room anymore. But let's wrap up this video. Ramin's not looking. Um, Ramin doesn't care about any of you. I care, and I want to continue the new trend of how we end all of our videos and say, maintain your groovy selves. See. Maintain your groovy selves. <laughs> something specific with that attic and that it's something dark. Phenomenal. It's a funeral home. <laughs> 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 <laughs>